Vincent Bugliosi is with us. He is the author, he's the renowned prosecuting attorney, the guy who prosecuted Charlie Manson, wrote a book about it called Helter Skelter, among others. Um, my favorite of all of his books is The Prosecution of George W. Bush for Murder, if I'm remembering that title correctly. His latest book, Divinity of Doubt, The God Question. And I have VanguardPressBooks.com, uh, uh, Vincent, uh, here, but uh, is that is that the best place to find it? Well, it just came out yesterday, and I guess it's available in all the Barnes and Noble stores. Oh, so, the so just just I, hit, I your found, local, hit your local hit your local sources. Oh yeah, and I found here. out yesterday that for some reason the book is on Amazon dot com for fifteen dollars. Now I don't know how it can sell for that amount of money, but uh, yeah. it's, it, it does. Well, that's great. Okay, so we're talking with Vincent Bugliosi. Your new book is called "Divinity of Doubt: The God Question." The God Question. You know, you write about. Uh, intelligent design in your book. Uh, you, 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 you. Actually, let me, let me, let me start someplace else here. You ask. Uh, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time with your book, and at that. least a dozen times in your book that I read, you ask the question why people pray. In fact, you had a whole you, in one of the later chapters. You basically devoted the entire chapter to it. The one about trees, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know. Right, right. Uh, how about how about this as an answer? Because you ask it both as a genuine and as a rhetorical question. Right. How about this as an answer? They do it because it makes them feel better. Well, if it does in a placebo effect type of way, fine. But uh, if they think that God is actually answering their prayers, uh, then in effect, what are they saying? They're saying that God has the power, the power to answer prayers. Right. And if he does, Tom, uh, how can they possibly say he's all good when they know, absolutely know, that he nearly always turns down the praying party when the party needs him the most? Uh, like, like, you know, the six million Jews who most likely prayed to him during the Holocaust, like the incredible 25 million people who have already died worldwide from AIDS, people dying from starvation. And the fact that we know this, we don't think this, we know that God turned these people down, telling them, in effect, they couldn't care less, I think should tell us that God doesn't answer prayers. And if he well, happens to, if they happen to get what they prayed for, it had nothing to do with God. Yeah, I, it always used to strike me as odd, you know, uh, the, the classic news report where uh, I grew up in Michigan, where we'd get tornadoes and they always seemed to blow up mobile home parks, you know. And three or four people would be dead, or a dozen people, or whatever. And they'd come up to some poor survivor and go, "How are you doing?" Oh, you know, we prayed to God and He saved our lives. And I'm like, "What? Wait a minute. What about those people who died?" So, so you know, following that logic, doesn't that mean that the next larger question should be not, "Is there some anthropomorphic old man with a long beard who decides whether or not to answer answer prayers and things?" But what is the nature? of the of the impulse that that so many people feel to uh, I, I, I I'm reluctant to even use the word divinity um, you know what is the nature of, of spirituality um, aside from an or anthropomorphic God and and why not and and in fact I I maybe it's in your book I, I can't say I read every word but I, I as I said I spent hours with it um, but I didn't see any significant discussion of pantheism or animism which seem to me like well, really, really logical alternatives to you mean monotheism. Pantheism, you mean like a stoplight is also God, and uh, like God, like God is everywhere. Pantheism, you know, so yes. Every to everything in creation is infused with some kind of divinity and intelligence because it all came from whatever it all came from, and it's all made out of that same stuff. Still, yeah, well, that's pantheism. My, my orientation, as you know, is, is the evidence, and the evidence takes me in certain places. And when you get into pantheism, that's just wild speculation. Uh, getting back to the, the uh, prayer thing, one of the most unusual things about prayer is that whenever there's a ter terrible catastrophe, 9-11, uh, Katrina, whatever it is, what do people do? They immediately go to their churches, and they pray, pray to God, the person who, what, the entity who either caused or allowed to, to, uh, to happen the very uh, terrible fate that had befallen the victims. So they go there to pray for the victims or their loved ones to the very entity who, by definition, either caused or allowed uh, to happen. Right the terrible fate that had befallen them. No, I, I get Tom, the... They, they I, do this because just like chickens lay eggs. You know what I mean? They, they, they do it uh, unthinkingly. Yeah. No, I, I, I get, you know, I, and I don't disagree with you that there is, there is an, an astounding amount of, 
of uh, incoherence in organized religion and in religion in general. But, yes. you know, should should gravity be questioned? Is this a religious or a political issue? I mean, these these there are there are there are layers underneath this i think that mm -hmm. you know beyond just the oh you know well you know it's that 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 mm -hmm. that we need to be discussing i think as a people well um, you, you have to realize that i'm not rejecting god in this book no i, I realize you're you're and, much and, like my father you're identifying yourself as an agnostic not an atheist right um i, I thought perhaps I, in fact i thought you're uh, you're taking on sam harris and some of these other guys that that I've debated on this program um, uh, was was pretty solid stuff. But um, uh, anyhow, back to that question. You know what what is underneath it all, or are you suggesting you know as a, as a as an agnostic, you simply don't ha don't know, don't have an opinion, or do you have an opinion and maybe I missed it in the book? Well, I stay away from opinions. My whole orientation is the evidence, and I think I have a pretty good background in that area, a certain amount of credibility. In fact, Tom, just, 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 just last month, uh, at the invitation of the Pentagon, uh, I gave a lecture for three hours to Marine prosecutors down at uh, Camp Pendleton. So I don't right. get into opinions, because if I get into opinions, uh, the local grocer or the local cappy, his opinions are just as good as mine. Well, I think, However, I th I, I, however I, when Christianity says they are basing some of their positions on the Bible, at that point I can step in and say, wait a while, folks. Yeah. The Bible does not say what you say it does, and in some instances say it says the precise opposite of what you said. Right, or, or both. We get into things like <laughs> the virgin birth and stuff like or, that. Or both. And, 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 and you know, and, and good on you for speaking in the military. I wish you'd get to the Air Force Academy, which has become an evangelical um, yes. uh, right. uh, uh, petri dish, uh, you know, a, be a breeding of ground. Um, Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really quite extraordinary. Um, where, though, and we have just a minute left here, um, you reject pantheism. And yet, how do you explain the fact that if you split a, an atomic particle into two pieces and they go flying off into space, and you rotate one of those particles 100,000 miles away or 1,000 miles away, instantaneously, not at the speed of light, but instantaneously, the other half of the particle will change. But there's still this Tom, interconnectedness. Tom, I come up with things in this book that, if true, literally shake the very foundations of Christianity on free will, uh, immortality of the soul, uh, the virgin birth, and you're asking me a question that I couldn't begin to answer unless I took a course in college. Well, this is I a have question. No answer to your question like that. I don't okay. even discuss it, but I do discuss yeah. things that, if true, literally shake the very foundations of, of Christianity. The book yeah. is a heavy book. It's almost scary. You've read the book. There's some heavy, heavy stuff in it. It is. Not... Yeah, it's a, it's an indictment of of organized religion, and and uh, I'm I'm assuming you grew up Catholic. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's it 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 kind of shows. <laughs> that, 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 that you've that you've uh, been there, done that, and uh, you know got the T-shirt. Uh, Vincent Bugliosi, his book is Divinity of Doubt: The God Question. And uh, thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah, my really pleasure, my pleasure. And thanks for joining us last night as well. Good talking with you, and good luck with the book, sir.